do feel like you kind of have a handle of solving a system of equations, but once you start to do the work all by yourself and you keep on getting stuck at the same spots each and every time. Yep, that's me. Well, in this video, what I want to do is go over the most common mistakes that I see with my students when they're solving a system of equations algebraically, because I want you to stop making the same mistakes over and over. So therefore, when you have to work through a problem, you can do it with ease. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, the first mistake that I see students make time and time again is always trying to solve for y. And I think this stems from when we first introduced solving a system of equations, we deal with graphing. When we're graphing a linear equation, we have it as a y equals. So when students want to use substitution or even elimination, they're always solving for y. So that is the first mistake. Stop solving for y. Now again, I get it. Solving for y can be helpful. But again, you don't want to go out of your way to always have to solve for y because sometimes your x might be isolated or sometimes it's going to be easier to solve for x or to eliminate x than it is for y. So don't get stuck in this mindset. In this example, I already have my equation solved for x, so I would want to use substitution. I would just plug this expression in for x into the other equation. It makes absolutely no sense for me to use inverse operations to solve for y just so I could solve for y. I remember when we're solving a system of equations, we need to be solving for x and for y. So we want to be able to solve for whatever variable it is first, that's gonna be our easiest. So if X is the easiest, then start with X. If Y, then go with Y. In the next example, it's gonna be easier to solve for X because the coefficients have a smaller common multiple than the coefficients for the Y. Again, you can choose either one to eliminate the X or the Y. In this case, it's gonna be easier to work with eliminating the X over the Y. The next tip that I see my students make, as well as your humble teacher, makes all the time if I'm talking too fast and not paying attention to what I'm doing is not multiplying all the way through. And it's really important to us to understand why we need to do this so we don't make this mistake. So again, if we can spend a quick little second going back to memory lane. Uh... When we had an equation with fractions just like this, one of the ways that we could solve for x would be to first eliminate our fractions. And to do that, we would multiply by our LCD. But it was very important that we needed to multiply everything times this LCD to get rid of the fractions. The reason why this worked is because as long as we multiply everything, everything on the left and everything on the right, we produce what we call an equivalent equation. Equivalent equations have the same solutions, but you can see how this secondary equation is gonna be a lot easier for me to solve for x than the equation with the fractions. So remember to make sure you multiply everything by your scalar multiple. So let's go back and take a look at where students will make this type of mistake. So in this equation, I have a 2x minus 3y equals negative 5 and a 5x plus 2y is equal to 16. Now in this case, we're going to want to use elimination and we're going to want to eliminate the y. And the reason being is because the coefficients of our y variable has a smaller least common multiple than our x's. And what we recognize is the least common multiple of 3 and 2 is 6. And that's what I want to obtain. Now recognize that one's negative and one's positive and that's perfect because that's going to help us when we combine the two equations. But first we got to get the coefficients to be the same. One positive and one negative is going to be preferred. And if I recognize the least common multiple of three and two is six, then all I need to do in the top equation is multiply by two and the bottom equation, I just need to multiply by three. Now what you can notice is I took this two and I multiplied by each and every term to obtain a four X minus six Y equals negative 10. And in the second equation, I took the three and I multiplied by everything in the bottom equation to obtain a 15 X plus 6y equals 48. Now again, these are equivalent equations to my original system. So we're not changing the solution. All we're doing is we're multiplying it by a larger scalar that's gonna make it easy for us to eliminate our variables. If you miss this mistake, you're not gonna create an equivalent equation and therefore your solution will be wrong. Now, if you're curious on what the next step would be, you're just gonna have to go ahead and add the two equations and what you would get, it'd be a 19x equals a positive 38. And then you can go ahead and solve for x. But that is where most students are gonna make mistake number three. And the reason reason why I typically see my students making mistake number three is because they're used to solving for a variable. We remember solving linear equations. We spend so much time always solving for X always graphing with y. But we have to remember these are simultaneous equations. This is a system. We have two variables that we're trying to solve, a x and a y. So it's very important when we're looking for the solution of a system of equations that we identify the value of all of our variables. And in this case, we have an x and a y. So the mistake number three is students solving for one variable and not solving for the other. And again, it's pretty simple. That would look just like this. The students would solve for x, they would divide by 19 on both sides, 
and get an X equals two. And then they say, hey, I'm done. And they go off on their merry way. And then they would realize oh, no. that they forgot to finish the problem. And don't worry, I've been there as a teacher and I've been there as a student. So I know exactly what the feeling is like. You have to slow down and make sure that you're solving for your X as well as for your Y. Now, if you're looking for a bonus mistake that a lot of times students make is when they did solve for Y, they always want to sometimes solve it into these second equations. But a lot of times you can see that the math would actually be a lot easier with this original equation. So this isn't a mistake that happens a lot, but I do see some students that they always feel like they have to use these equations. Remember, these are just equivalent equations. So feel free to use any equation to plug your value for X in to go ahead and solve for Y. In this case, I would choose the top equation to plug two in for X, and then you can go ahead and solve for Y. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, three mistakes that happen year after year. And hopefully there's some mistakes that maybe you've done in the past, but you're not gonna do anymore. Now, I also have another video on the common tips that you can use to solve systems of equations with ease, as well as multiple examples of me working through solving system of equations step-by-step step in the playlist below. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Cheers.